the launch conductor in um, mission control. We, we pause at this moment in our countdown to remember and honor the lives of each of the participants on the Celestis Memorial space flight. Their presence on this flight signifies a commitment to the opening of the space frontier shared by all of us. We wish the friends and families present today and all those who are with us in spirit all over the world, Godspeed, good luck, and our thanks for allowing us to share this very personal time with you today. LCL. Five vehicles armed, three, two, one, fire. Good evening. I uh, hope everyone's doing fine. My name is Mark Lee, and I'm one of the one of the ambassadors for Celestis Memorial uh, Space Flight. Um, we have, as to, as usual, uh, information for you that we do every time we're scheduled for a broadcast, and it's basically to keep uh, the family members and and, and interested parties uh, just knowing what's going on with our upcoming flights. Um, I'm, I'm, there's a lot of exciting news that we're going to talk about today, but this is. This is kind of a special episode. We, we in fact, will get to those updates, uh, but we're going to focus a lot, a majority, on this broadcast on our CEO, Charles Chafer. And there have been questions that I'm sure that's been out there and that we've gathered um, to pretend, present to Charles so you guys can pretty much get an idea of exactly what Celestis is, what Celestis is all about, uh, how do you purchase a Celestis flight, and exactly who is Charles Chafer. Um, if you are in our chat room, please, please feel free to go ahead and enter any question. You can type in and enter any question that you yourselves may have, or by the end of this broadcast, just basically, you know, ha hasn't been touched on yet, hasn't been answered. Um, we welcome Mr. Chafer uh, this evening, so we're going to go ahead and bring him up here with me. And hi, boss. Hey, Mark. How are you? I am still tall and handsome. Thank you for asking. You're very welcome. <laughs> um, Charles, what I like about Celestis um, is that uh, we, we understand that there are, uh, you know, other competitors and people that are out there who um, do uh, similar services. Uh, I can honestly brag. Um, that we are, in fact, the best at what we do. So even if any of those uh, competitors are, are watching, we're not here to insult you or degrade you in any way whatsoever. Um, but I have been uh, a part of this long enough to know that we are just fantastic um, in this service. Uh, is there anything you want to start off with? I'm assuming probably with updates, or do you want to leave that till later? Well, let's go ahead and reward the folks that logged on early with some breaking news. Uh -oh. um, well, actually, today we announced uh, our launch date for the coming Aurora Earthrise mission. Um, that mission will fly from Spaceport America in New Mexico. And uh, it's without further uh, tension. The launch date is April 13th. So uh, not that long from now, we'll be gathering, I expect there'll be around 200 of us uh, out at Spaceport America and Las Cruces area of New Mexico to see probably more than 100 uh, flight participants, uh, flight capsules launched into space, uh, experiencing microgravity, returning to Earth via parachute, uh, where we'll capture the uh, payload as it comes down and uh, return everyone a flown keepsake flight capsule. It's uh, called our Earthrise service. And as I often say, um, it's in many ways our most intimate service. And by that, I mean, it's really possible to see the whole launch operation up close and personal um, when you come out to visit the 
the launch uh, there in Las Cruces. So as is always our um, approach, we'll have three days of um, launch related activities um, beginning April 11th. And on that day, it's sort of the arrival day. We'll have a headquarters hotel there in Las Cruces that we'll soon announce. And uh, everyone comes there, registers for the events, and just in general gets ready for, the, for all of the activities that are following. Then typically the second day, which in this case will be April 12th, we um, all board buses and take the, eh, it's probably about a 30 to 40 minute journey out to the middle of the um, New Mexico desert um, where there's a amazing facility called Spaceport America. Many of you have seen that facility um, if you watched uh, the um, uh, Sir Richard Branson uh, suborbital missions earlier this year. Um, and uh, we're in that area. We're at what they call the vertical launch area. So on the day before, we load the buses up, go to Spaceport America, take a right turn at the UFO, which is also known as the main building and head down to the vertical launch area where we're greeted by our hosts um, up aerospace. Um, they do a nice briefing there, let you see mission control, let you go right up to very near the launch vehicle on the pad. And you'll get a personal briefing from up aerospace personnel about the mission, the rocket, the primary pur pur purpose of the mission, which for us, of course, is Memorial Space Flight. For NASA, it's flying a number of uh, uh, scientific and educational uh, microgravity experiments. And um, then we'll head on back uh, to Las Cruces. And in the afternoon, we'll have our memorial service, uh, where basically the the people that attend in support of their family members, friends, loved ones who are on board have an opportunity to say a few words uh, about their loved one and their loved one's participation on the mission. That's always um, a very compelling uh, service. Then we'll, in the evening, have a hosted dinner um, and we'll also announce the details of that. So the day before is pretty jam packed. That means if you can arrive the 11th, you, you won't be uh, pressed in order to participate in those activities. And then on T zero or launch day, again, we all board buses. It's usually oh dark 30 in the morning because the launch uh, time is usually right at sunrise when the winds are at the lowest out on the range. And we go out and see an amazing spectacle of uh, a suborbital rocket reaching Mach 6 in you know a couple seconds off the launch pad and uh, powering all the way up to around uh, 100 nautical miles uh, to release the payload and return back to Earth. So that's the big news is that we have a launch date. For those of you who have loved ones on board, your primary contact had received today a notification of this and will be in constant touch with you all um, over the coming weeks and months as we announce specific locations and specific um, services that you, you'll need to sign up for if you're going to come to the launch. <clears throat> if you don't come to the launch, um, you're missing a great show, but it's certainly understandable. Uh, we'll, we always uh, contract to provide a webcast of the launch. Usually it's a slightly delayed webcast 
um, near real time, I guess is how I describe it. And uh, that goes worldwide on the internet and you'll be able to see that as well as a real time um, uh, webcast of our memorial service and, and uh, hosted dinner. So there's a lot of activities that you can participate in as well uh, if you decide that you want to view it uh, over the um, over the internet. So uh, that's the big news, and um, uh, happy to break it here today. And you know, I see we have some questions brewing. And I don't know, Mark, if you want to say anything, you're always invited. But otherwise, we can dive right in. Yeah, uh, real quick, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you should not miss uh, any of our future broadcasts now that we do have a launch date for April or let's say, let's say an attendance date for you to be uh, at April 11th. Um, don't rush to book too many plans yet until we've solidified everything. Charles will tell you when, in fact, to start purchasing air tickets and things of that nature because uh, space is fluid, uh, scheduling space is fluid. Um, so things can happen between now and then. And of course, even when you do purchase, it should be a refundable ticket and not non-refundable because if you purchase now and you do it under non-refundable and the, the flight date changes, well, sorry, we're telling you now and we will be repeating this for at least each and every broadcast. Uh, I'm excited about this. Uh, it's a great launch site. Um, it's a perfect time of year. It's a spring launch, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I think we're going to be excited about uh, the beautiful weather in the New Mexico desert. So um, we, we we don't, you know, I'll prep this up a lot as as it's party time. And no, we, we're there for a reason, to, 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 to celebrate your family members. But we want to make you feel good and happy as well. It's, it's not going to be dark times when you're out there with us. It's going to be great fun times. And uh, yes, there are questions. Can I pull up this one from Richard, Charles? Yeah, let me just say one other thing, which is the best, if you're going to fly in, the best place to fly to is El Paso. Right. It's the closest major airport to Las Cruces. If you fly into Albuquerque, you have a, about twice the drive that you do from El Paso. But people do both, uh, whatever works for you all. So, yeah, please go ahead, Mark. Yeah. Um, okay, this one's from Richard. How you doing, Richard? Uh, miss you, buddy. Can families invite as many friends and family as they want to attend the launch? Yeah, uh, we've never hit a limit to date. And we had, I think, around 700 guests at uh, the <laughs> Kennedy Space Center at oh, our amazing, it was amazing. last uh, mission that we did there. Um, you'll want to make sure you get reservations and um, uh, work through us to make sure that we know you're coming and that you're effectively signed up for everything. But yeah, we don't, we don't place a limit. Uh, at least we haven't had to yet. Um, with the way COVID has been working, it looks like knock on wood that that might not be the big issue that it might've been a year ago. What well, was a year ago. So, uh, it looks, looks pretty clear. And I know the, uh, folks in New Mexico are very hospitable, and uh, it's a it's a great place to visit. Yeah, I think it's going to be really fun for people to come out. Oh, I didn't mean to put that one up as of yet until I knew it was re really okay. Uh, can you talk about tranquility at all? Absolutely, yeah, sure. So tranquility is uh, currently scheduled by uh, ULA, the launch service provider, and Astrobotic upon whose spacecraft we fly for June of next year. Now there's not a specific date associated with that, but if you look up the first flight of the Vulcan rocket, uh, you'll see June, 2022. Um, as we get closer, that will firm up. Um, there's a lot of work that everybody has to do. This will be the first flight of the Vulcan Centaur rocket, and it's being built as we speak. Excuse me, I noticed that uh, the engines for that rocket, which are provided by um, Blue Origin, Jeff Bezos's company, 
have been delivered to ULA and are undergoing uh, acceptance uh, testing and acceptance checking. So everything is moving forward toward that June 22 date. To remind everybody, that'll be a mission that's flown out of the uh, Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, which is adjacent to the Kennedy Space Center. And uh, it should be a pretty stunning mission as well. We're really looking forward to coming down to Florida in June and, and or whenever and um, seeing that mission fly. Wow, with a, a flight, you know, only two months behind the previous one from New Mexico, it, it, it kind of makes it tight for us, doesn't it, Charles? Well, it does, because also if you'll pay attention to our website, we're also showing the Voyager first flight, the Enterprise flight, which is going to deep space uh, right. in that exact same time frame. So we're really wow. looking at conducting bam, 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 three missions. So uh, yeah. it'll it'll test us, but we, you know, we've done 17 so far, so we kind of think we know what we're doing. Yeah, I and, think. Uh, and I think we have a good team that will put on a, uh, a good effort and fulfill everyone's uh, expectations, we, we hope. Okay. Uh, if, if there are any questions, anyone is viewing us right now and you're in our chat room, you are able to type in a question uh, right now. And at some point, we want to get directly to an interview uh, with Charles, but uh, we want to stay on target and give you guys the information that you need. I would hope that once you do get all the information about your upcoming flights, that you will hang around. Um, this is a very, very interesting guy to get to know. Um, we're going to talk more about ourselves. You'll, you'll be more familiar with the way we do things after this conversation um, than you probably are now. Right now, you're just getting hard facts, hard language on terms of when, where, and how. But uh, there's more hows to what we do. And... Uh, there's an interesting well let's make sure we're done with all the missions are we are we done with mission speak right now charles yeah well i can i guess i can just to complete you know we offer four services and i've described the next mission for three of them so let me go ahead and describe the fourth which is our the service that we started the company with uh it's our earth orbit service and that next flight which we have named excelsior is scheduled for launch in the first quarter of 2023. That'll be on a Spaceflight Industries carrier, which will be on a Falcon 9 SpaceX hmm. rocket uh, launching, uh, I don't know if it'd be 39A or uh, uh, whether they'll move it down to the Air Force Station. Uh, but that will that then is, each of our next missions. So basically, Mark, we have um, four missions in 13 months ahead of hmm. us. So when we meet in the office, uh, we kind of stare at each other and say, oh, how about that? So, yeah, I'm old. I think I'll need a nap in between okay. each one, if you don't mind, OK? No um, so, so wow. I, I, I opened the barn doors here when I said, if you have any questions, uh, we're still into launch. Uh, talk here. So uh, uh, we can pull one more up if you want. Sure. Uh, Barb, Barb has a question here. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed you, Keith. I'll get back to you, Keith. What uh, about the Destiny flight to the moon? What about the Destiny flight to the moon? Yeah, taking reservations, currently targeting the early part of 2024 or the late part of 2023 for that launch. And that'll be our third lunar mission and um we'll have more details about that the entirety of that mission uh a little bit down the road we're right now trying to focus on the four that we're doing but we know destiny is coming and uh that'll be a cool mission as well it's uh i'll make a comment that it's been so good that nasa has created a program called the Commercial Lunar Payloads uh, Service, CLIPS, I believe is what it's called. And they have issued significant contracts to several commercial companies, Astrobotic, Intuitive Machines, uh, a few others, Firefly Aerospace, to essentially 
become the anchor tenant, I think is the best way to describe that, on commercial lunar landers. And so there's really a renaissance of missions going to the moon starting uh, this year. Uh, and uh, well, maybe this year, <laughs> there's only one. I, I, by this year, I mean next year, 2022. Right. There'll be at least two or three missions landing on the moon. So we're beginning to see sort of routine capability to, to get to the moon, which uh, means that our flight rate can increase and uh, provide, uh, I'm never going to say it's a routine service, uh, but a, a, a schedulable, reliably schedulable service. Yeah, commercial space flight is here, guys. Uh, it's all over the place. We've seen it. Um, we, we, we've seen Shatner flown into space, and, and we have a relationship with, with uh, Star Trek uh, people on our flights, our flights, uh, and future Star Trek people uh, on our flights, but that's something we can talk about. Okay, what we have here, we have a list of questions that kind of relates more personally to you. Uh, so if there isn't any other flight information, I'd like to go on, uh, carry on with the uh, personal side of this, which is uh, Mr. U. Chafer, sure. Mr. U. Chafer, Mr. Chafer, you. you. Yeah. Um, so in, in doing so, if, if people don't realize who this gentleman is on the screen, if you, you, you come in, I'm seeing some of the numbers of attendance going up uh, a bit here. So I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys are logging in for a long time. Uh, Charles Chafer. Uh, is, is my boss, the one and only CEO of Celestis Memorial uh, Space Flight. And uh, it's really interesting, Charles. Let me, let me ask this. I'm, this is going to be the first question to you because it's in relation to uh, our name and what we do. Sure. Uh, in, in terms of friends, well, not, no, I can't, I'm sorry. Eliminate the word friends. I'm sorry. People we don't know, okay, people who come across our site. People who have, may have heard of this service, word of mouth. How do you take any ridicule, any uneducated comments, shall I say? And I use un uneducated very heavily because the only reason people will make some sort of comments to what we do. How do you take that seriously? How do you approach it? How do you explain it? Um. When we first started, I think there was more, I wouldn't use ridicule, I'd say skepticism about the service and the value of the service and just the reality of the service. 17 missions down the line, having served, you know, a couple thousand folks, um, we're just like scattering at sea, only you look up. And so we're, we're, just another service in that sense. We're very careful with what we do um, to design our services so that they don't contribute to orbital pollution, which is a, a, a significant area of concern these days. Most anybody else, um, I don't even think there's all that much objection anymore. It's more just, well, that's not a service I want which certainly I understand because there are many that I wouldn't want. So really at this point, we don't really see that much. And most of the people that reach us are really looking for us and they understand the connection that their loved one had to space, to space travel, to astronomy, uh, to Star Trek. And they find this the most appropriate way to express their love, but also to celebrate the life of someone, it's sort of like lighting the biggest candle, if you will. And um, so, again, at this point, I think not every service isn't for everyone, uh, but it never was intended to be for everyone. Uh, it's it's just a really positive, compelling, fulfilling experience at this point. Which other forms of memorials also offer? So you know uh, that's the amazing thing that's happened since we started. When we began the business um, in the mid 1990s, the cremation rate in this country was around 20 percent. People electing cremation as their final disposition, and so uh, we were kind of a minority service, if you will. There. Uh, today, it's over 
50 percent and in another decade it will be 80 percent and so what's happened with people choosing this form of final disposition they're given options on memorial services that weren't there mark when you and i were kids um, yeah. oh man <laughs> yeah so now you can become a tree you can become a diamond you can become a coral reef uh, you can be launched into space. There are a variety of, of very, I think, very meaningful and cool services out there that, you know, we just happen to be one of the first alternative uh, services. Yeah, and 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 I and I, I I try to explain to people, not that I have to, you know, uh, nor is it a fight. Um, but yes, this is to honor your loved ones. This is what they ask for. This is what they want. And it's not just uh, deceased loved ones that can fly with us. We, we fly up DNA. We can fly up your DNA. Uh, we fly up the uh, ashes, the cremated remains of pets because some people want to go up in space, uh, want their pets to go with them, or they want to send their pets up vice versa. So there's all kinds of dreams. People sprinkle ashes over mountains and over oceans and things of that nature. This is no different than just fulfilling a wish. Sure. Okay, so one of the uh, next questions we got going up here is uh, who invented the concept of Celestis Memorial Space Flight? That's a good question. If you take out Celestis, I can say that I've traced the concept of Memorial Space Flight at least back into the 1800s in science fiction kind of pulp magazines and what have you. Uh, and that's not surprising in the sense that. Um, any story that involves humans going and living in deep space, ultimately, uh, unless they've created immortality as part of their process, ultimately has an, it has a um, decision about final disposition. So they were already discussing it in early, early, early science fiction. But uh, more to the point, actually, Celestis as a name of a concept and as a service was invented by three gentlemen in the 1980s, who two uh, funeral directors and a Kennedy Space Center engineer, who had the idea, a little bit different than how we do it, but not significantly so, uh, and approached uh, my then boss, Deke Slayton, uh, we were in the commercial rocket business. We were SpaceX before SpaceX, if you will. And uh, they came to Deke with this idea and he thought it was great. Said something to the effect of, I've had this in my will for years and now I'm, we're able to make this happen. So the actual concept was invented, if you will. The modern concept was invented in the mid 1990s um, by or mid 1980s, but for a variety of reasons, a lot of them relating to how the state of Florida opted to regulate the company. But I think more likely it just wasn't time then. Those guys were not successful. But uh, I remembered uh, the global interest in the service when it was announced and uh, in the mid 90s was looking for a new project. And that's when we started the modern Celestis. And so we sought out the people that had founded the company and uh, got their permission to use the name, although the registration had expired, but we just thought it was the right thing to do. And ended up flying all three of the founders of that service on wow. some of our earlier flights. Oh, that's awesome. That's absolutely awesome. All righty. Uh, Keith asks here, how are missions named? Where do you come up with these names for our missions? That's the right statement. Where do I come up with them? Because it's <laughs> it's on me. I, I have named every flight we've had uh, since the phone founder. book. You're, you're, you're doing the phone book thing and putting a finger down on it and boom. You got now, you know, I keep a little notepad on my iPhone. And when something hits me as the appropriate uh, one that's going to be good in the future, I tap it in. And um, so I've got kind of a bank of appropriate names and I'll dial into that bank and, and decide which one is which flight. 
sometimes it gets pretty late in the process before we name it, but we, we always come up with, I think, a, a, a meaning. We attempt to provide a meaningful name for the mission. And of course, with that, we have a, a design for a mission theme, a mission patch, a mission pen. Uh, we create all of the um, accoutrements of a, of a real space mission because, in fact, we are a real space mission. Hey, our mission patches are really gorgeous, you guys. Uh, if you go on our web page, okay, or even our Facebook page, but I, specifically our web page, and look up uh, the mission patches and take a look at all the mission patches that were flown uh, or literally designed for these these uh, missions. You yourself can own. Sorry, this is not a sales pitch. It's, it's an offer. Um, if you are interested in all our mission patches, go take a look. Might be one of them that you'd like to own for yourself. They're really cool. Uh, I like to see someone come out to any one of our launches with every single mission patch on the jacket. That would be awesome. that would be that would be amazing. All right, I'm going to ask you two questions here at the same time. I'm going to encompass these pretty much in the same question. One is, uh, why is choosing a memorial space flight better than a memorial service at home? How does it work, and is it really expensive? Okay. So there's my three. Why is well, why is choosing a memorial space flight better than 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 a memorial service at home? Well, you know, the first part of it's a little bit difficult because it's such a personal decision. Yes. Um, and so I'm not going to say that we're better than any other form. We're just appropriate and we're cool and <laughs> we're amazing. And we do a great job at creating a closure for people. So that's who we are and what we do. And I'll kind of leave it to others to explain why theirs is uh, uh, what they do. And, and that, you know, that's what's great. There, it's a world out there where you have these choices today that you didn't have um, all along. Um, how do you purchase was the second? Um, uh, yeah, uh, actually, the second was how does it work? But of course, the third was, is it really expensive? Uh, let me go to that one then. Um, okay. And again, it's a all things being relative, because I know that there's lots of people out there that filling up your gas tank is expensive for. So in a relative sense, I will say that you need to have some level of means in order to choose our service. But we've always thought that we ought to be able to offer the service for at least some level of a service for a about half of the traditional funeral costs. And we've held to that line uh, ever since we started. So we have four services. So the average cost of a U.S. funeral today, and I'm only going to do U.S., the average cost in Japan is is about three times what it is in the U.S., but in other places it's it's less than that. So let's, let's stick in the U.S. Uh, the average cost of a funeral today is – Nine thousand plus dollars, more or less, uh, and again, that's the average cost. Um, our services, we have four services. We have our Earthrise service, which um, is the one that our Aurora flight will fly, and that's basically go to space and return a flown keepsake. That's priced right at two thousand five hundred dollars, so it's well under half of the traditional. American funeral. Right. Um, our Earth Orbital service, which is many way in many ways is our most popular service, is priced right at five thousand dollars, which is close enough to half of the traditional service that that will count it at that. So those are our our two tier one, tier two services. Then you get to a little bit more expensive missions uh, if you're going to the moon or you're going to deep space, i.e. beyond the moon. And those are $12,500, so a little bit above the average cost of a funeral in the U.S. But that's because they don't go there very often, and it's very expensive to get there. So um we think it's a, and we've been able to hold the prices. There's been no inflationary effect um, to our pricing. And again, uh, we find, we think it's good value. Let me put it that way. Um, right. And with that, you get a performance guarantee. What do I mean by that? I mean that 
if the uh, mission fails and rockets have been known to fail. Although I will say these days, the launchers that we're using are really highly reliable. But in the instance that we don't achieve the mission objective, we offer a, a, a free or a complimentary reflight. So that's the way we guarantee, offer the, the flight guarantee. And also included in the price is, of course, the our hosting of you. Now you have to get there and 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 um, feed yourself and pay for your transportation, all that kind of stuff. But we create a, an event and staff it and deliver that to you uh, for each mission. We also create a professionally produced um, video of all three days of the uh, of the mission, which you have. It's downloadable. It's a keepsake. It's a memory for when you were there or a memory of the launch events that you saw on the website. So that's sort of the, the price uh, of it. And um, give me that third part again. <laughs> uh, you, you basically uh, answered you it. it. I think you covered it all. Um, or, or I'm going to encompass this. Uh, I just saw a great question I want to put up there. But uh, let's let's do this one real quick because I'm going to do three at a time here, and it all basically means the same thing, which is um, when is the best time to sign up? Can I purchase from my funeral home? Um, and how many people can go up on each launch? Okay, remember the, I won't remember them all. So I, I'm fine. It's fine. When is the best time to sign up? Um, well, we offer this two kinds of services. The first one is the one we've been talking about, which is in the parlance of our times in the uh, funeral industry, uh, it's called an at-need service. And that basically means that someone has passed away and you want to fly them. So in that, it is advisable to uh, contact us relatively early in the in your process of making a decision and then once you commit to it um the um uh the wheels kick in and all of the things that we have to do and we have to do a lot of things to prepare for the mission begin so that doesn't quite answer the question a better way to say is if you're an at need person you need to be fully, we need to have your flight sample, which you've had to either mail to us directly or had your funeral director mail it to us. We need that at least 90 days before the mission. And that's the very end of the cycle. That's pressing it. So better to be like six months in advance of the mission. Now, the other service we offered is, is called prearrange. And that just means that, hey, I know I want to do this. I want to make sure that I've locked the price in. I want to make sure that I have the service done so my family doesn't have to run around and find you at the time, sign up. Those, you can literally sign up anytime for those. Those uh, contracts are, uh, uh, once you've signed that, we take, we take the majority of your payment and we put it in a trust account that's yours, your name. It's in a federally recognized trust facility. And that money is held in trust until we go show them that we perform the service for you. So that, and you're able to cancel that really at any time you want to, although we don't, we have hardly ever have any cancellations. So you have a trust account, you know the service is going to be paid for, you don't have to worry, uh, uh, gee, my, my, my son is kind of forgetful, he may not remember to do this and that kind of, that's uh, sign up whenever you're ready to do that. Is the best. So that was the first part of your three-part question. Give me number. Well, yeah, actually, you answered two, so that okay. was that was pretty cool. cool. I, th I think the other one out of the three that I just asked was, uh, how many people go up? Uh, What's the capacity? How many yeah. people can we actually take? Pretty much unlimited. I mean, wow. um, it really. I want to say that um, the most we've ever flown is about 350 folks, and we could easily do three times that on. Um, missions we have to know we have to decide in advance how much 
capacity we purchase from a provider. So we kind of have to make an educated guess about how many we can fly. But the ability to get to space these days is a lot easier than it was when we started. And so, and we, again, we fly a symbolic portion of cremated remains. So it's a small sample, which is encased in a permanent flight capsule, right? Oh, like oh, lipstick oh. or half a battery. Oh, so not, like the size of, not the size of my head. I'm just putting no, it close yeah. to the camera here. But. And you can see examples of those on our website. So we right. fly those um, flight tested flight capsules uh, and they weigh anywhere from three and a half to seven and a half grams. So we buy a kilogram of capacity. Uh, you can put up to 330 folks in, in a kilogram. Okay, what about uh, DNA, Charles, in terms of uh, samples collected? And uh, when you store it, exactly how long do they remain viable? You know, sure. The, the, also a good question. So we introduced the DNA component of the flight for a couple of reasons. The first was that not everyone chooses cremation as final disposition. Um, and for people that want to have a traditional burial, uh, we can collect DNA uh, via the uh, funeral director at the time of need and fly that in lieu of cremation. But we also had a number of people that wanted to, say, fly along with a loved one in the form of my DNA, her cremated remains, or just simply wanted to send their DNA to the stars. And uh, that's an option that we introduced a few years ago now, and increasingly people are choosing to do that. With DNA, we're handling, so that's a, we're partnered with a DNA memorial in Thunder Bay, Canada, which is a DNA lab. And the collection process is basically a cheek swab. They, it's sent to our lab partner. They bind it to a, a sub, an inert substrate substrate, which creates basically a, a powder. And um, that powder is then uh, what we fly into space. It, it reflects the entire human genome from the DNA. So we basically just fly those that amount in our flight capsules instead of ashes. Um, and, um, uh, oh, the uh, what do we do to protect that? So uh, cremated remains, don't deteriorate any further than they are. There's no radiation harm associated with that. For DNA, it's a little bit more, um, it's more, although it is inert and um, they fly, we fly it inside of vehicles and what have you, we have gone the extra step with all the missions um, that we're doing of uh, going to what's called a titanium five metal for our flight capsules. That's the same metal that NASA uses to shield their spacecraft. So mm -hmm. while so our our DNA capsules are flying in pretty heavily shielded radiation protection, we don't really have any way of knowing whether it's going to last five million years or two hundred and fifty million years. But we know that that's uh, best practice in terms of long-term storage for DNA. And that's what we do. I think the science is just so new and fresh. You're right. We, it, it's kind of hard to determine how long that's going to last. But I do like the romanticism of going up yourself. You still, you know, among us here on this earth, but going up uh, along with your loved ones. I mean, that's just incredible to say, uh, yeah, Charlie and I are, are going up in space. Let's say if I was your wife, Charlie, but yeah. this brings the next question that I found uh, very interesting. And I'm glad that you, you, you brought this up, but this was from Lindsay. And she basically says the Enterprise flight has such romantic undertones with the Roddenberries, the crewmate James Dewan, and the loving fandom of the Star Trek fran franchise. What does this mission in particular mean to you? Are there any are there any special options available for such an extra special mission? It's a, it's a good question. Um, the 
enterprise flight is a direct outgrowth of our launching of Gene Roddenberry's ashes on our founder's flight. Uh, at the time, I read that NASA uh, astronaut Jim Weatherby had carried some of Gene Roddenberry's ashes with him on the space shuttle um, and in his personal effects kit and took them to space and brought them back and gave them to Major Barrett Roddenberry. I had uh, been influenced as a young collegian by being invited to a I guess four person lunch with Gene Roddenberry at the Four Georges restaurant in Georgetown. It actually occurred on the day that Three Mile Island melted down, but wow. about, you know, 50 miles north from where we were. But that for a young starry eyed space geek like I was, that was a very memorable uh, luncheon that I had with Gene Roddenberry. And so when we started the Founders Flight, I approached Major Roddenberry through a friend, uh, Lori Garver, who went on to be the deputy director of NASA, who was at the time the director of the National Space Society. And I said, Lori, can you put me in touch with Major? I would like to ask her if she'd allow me to fly uh, her husband's ashes again on our first flight. Long story short is after some discussions with Bobby Slayton, Deke's widow and others, Majel said, yeah, I'll do that. And uh, so we had him on the very first flight, which left, it actually flew out of the Canary Islands in Spain, but the we had a gathering at Vandenberg Air Force Base where uh, the capsules were loaded onto the Pegasus. So Majel came up for that uh, that gathering. And I remember sitting with her at breakfast one morning and she said, she said, really, the only reason that I want to let you do that, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to do that. But you need to make me a deal. And, you know, well, of course, sure, whatever I can do. She said, when when it's time, when I've passed away, I want you to fly Gene and I together into a mission into deep space. So being young and, and full of entrepreneurial zeal, what could I say? But yeah, I'll do that, of course. <laughs> and that was the beginning of our Voyager service was that discussion with Majel. So that's the connection to Star Trek. We're now many years later because it's been challenging to fly a Voyager mission, but now we've got one, we're flying it, and we're actually able to fly the Roddenberries together. And I'll get a uh, IOU off of my checklist, and it should be pretty amazing mission. Uh, question about special options available. We have not yet announced it, but I'll go ahead and do breaking news number two here, tonight, <laughs> which is that, that we think just what you said, Mark, we think it's so cool to fly people together, you know, um, two folks together on the same mission that we've created a special opportunity at no additional cost if you choose our enterprise flight, we'll allow you to send some DNA and some ashes together in the same capsule. And normally that's what we call a Gemini service. And there's a half again charge associated with that. But we've decided to declare this flight open to anybody that wants to add that uh, DNA component to it. So that's that's sort of the special opportunity that we're creating. For that you. is amazing. As many Star Trek fans there are out here in the universe, can you imagine the number of people who are given the opportunity to literally fly with not just Gene, but his wife, Majel. And Jimmy uh, Doohan. Jimmy Doohan, who plays Scotty. Uh, uh, if you could make history yourself, right. uh, Star Trek fans uh, watching right now, you, you can submit your DNA and be on the same voyage as Gene and Major. And the fact that it's going into uh, deep space, which uh, is, is, is a feat in its own. I'm assuming that is a SpaceX rocket? No, uh, haven't announced who it is yet. We'll, okay. we're, we're I, you know, I'm told we'll, we'll do the final signature before Thanksgiving. 
we'll be announcing probably at our next Facebook Live all the specifics of okay. that flight of that mission. But it's uh, uh, no, it'll be a it'll be a, a very uh, I think exciting flight, and um, you know right now there'll be more than a hundred folks on that mission. And it also, you know, uh, there's, there's people from all over the world uh, going to deep space. And what I wanted to say is basically the trajectory of this mission takes the mission, the, what we call it's, it's like a little micro planet, our spacecraft, because we'll go out past Mars uh, to at least the 250 million mile mark. And at that point, you're sort of heliocentric, you're orbiting the sun. So we've created a little uh, platform of humanity, a little micro planet of humanity between Mars and the asteroid belt. Wow, that is exciting and uh, definitely a newsworthy story. Not, yeah. you know, the reason where it's going, but um, the fact of who's on board and and as, as just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, we're going to try and get through as many of these questions as possible. There are a lot of them here, and I know we're not going to get through all of them, so let's keep on going. Um, how can we track our loved ones once they fly? Good question. Also, um, so for our lunar flight, you just look up at the <laughs> – we'll be on the we'll – it's sort of in the upper north it's stationary <laughs> uh, area, and you, you, of course we'll track it all the way there. I'm kind of joking, but it's what's one of the coolest aspects of our Luna flight is you can go out on any moonlit night and celebrate your loved one. For our um, Earthrise missions, it's just tracked by the range and when it comes down, they send a helicopter and go get it. So there's not any real time tracking that we share. For the Earth orbital mission, you can go on our website and you can see, I think we currently have four satellites in orbit and you can just click on um, the section that says track my spacecraft or something like that. And you'll see where all four of our satellites are real time in their orbits around earth we have two of them that are polar orbits one of them's an equatorial orbit and the other one's sort of at a middle between the two orbit and um, then for the voyager service again we'll we'll announce how that one's going to be tracked um, a little bit later Okay. There, there's a lot in our future. Um, the fact that, and a lot of people, if you did not know, um, there is, in fact, like Charles has said, an opportunity to track uh, the flights of your loved ones uh, once they've, they've left Earth here. Um, but, you know, I, I like this statement here. Uh, imagine looking up at the moon and saying hello to your loved one. Uh, I got goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that is pretty, pretty cool. Well, you know, our first lunar mission put Dr. Eugene Shoemaker on the south pole of the moon at NASA's request. And I read and now his uh, wife just recently passed away, but she huh. would always talk about being able to go out on a moonlit night and look up and see where Gene was and the feeling that that gave her. Wow. That, that's, that's just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, okay, we're close to the end of our broadcast here, but we can still go in. Okay. I'm excited about attending a launch, but I understand a launch can slip. If it does, can I attend another launch attempt? Sure. Uh, and will I need to purchase another event ticket? Well, uh, let me tell you, first, you're, you're welcome. We try to um, uh, – welcome anyone that really wants to attend our launches because some people are thinking about whether they want to um, choose our service or not. And part of that decision process is bringing the family to the launch. So we always welcome folks that don't have people on board. If you have a loved one on board, of course you're going to be there for the launch and you're, you're welcome. The second question is, I'm going to give you kind of a used car salesman answer on it's a, it depends kind of an answer. So if um, there are a variety of refund options up to and including, 
I'm there and the thing is canceled. And, and we try to handle those individually. What I'll say is, um, so if, if a launch is just moved and you can't attend, we'll refund your money. It would be that simple. If a launch is moved and you want to attend it, then we'll apply your, and again, what, why do we take money at the launch is because we have to pay for uh, Spaceport America charges to let people on the, uh, on the property. We have to rent buses. We have to feed folks. So there are a number of things that are service dependent that we sign cancellation clauses on. So I don't want to, but it rarely happens, particularly on our, um, um, well, I would just say we, we don't have a lot of uh, last minute delays. If the uh, delay is a, occurring before we go out there, then it's sort of a no harm, no foul exist <laughs> issue. We just say, okay, get ready to come when the launch is. Uh, they do occasionally move. There's no doubt about it. But, but more often than not, when we say, and that's what Mark, you were saying early on, we'll tell you when we're buying our tickets, our airline tickets. And that right. means we have a high confidence that it's going yeah. to go on this day or the next day due to due to weather or something like that. And right. if and 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 for people that have made it known that they want to attend, we let everybody know. Okay, we we have a pretty high confidence in this launch date now, and they don't move around that much, but they do. Right. You know, again, it is it is rocket science, right? And, and to follow up uh, what Charles said. Uh, you, 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 you don't necessarily have to have a loved one on board to attend the launches. You are more than welcome uh, to come. And the launches are in, in, incredible. Our, our last one that we did out of the Cape was a mind blower. Uh, it was a night launch, which made, you know, the ignition sequence itself just, 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 just spectacular. Liftoff was spectacular. But it was and a Falcon went, Heavy also. So. It was a Falcon Heavy, which was uh, big, uh, two times worth the price of admission. And then the effect that it made up into – in the sky during its ascent was, oh my God, godly, no pun intended. It really was, if you saw it. And then to be right there, literally within the area watching the uh, the uh, the twin booster rockets descend down onto the barges was unbelievable. It could, you know, another price of the ticket. So the experience is, is itself, just to experience a launch and to be with us when that happens is twofold. You know, you're you're uh, you're appreciating the, the sight that you're beholding at the time, and the fact that you may be there uh, for a loved one at the same time is just uh, immeasurable in dollars. Um, okay, so we still got a couple minutes before we can squeeze in uh, more. Um, wow, we pretty much covered. Okay. Uh, all right, this one you've answered basically, and it was. Do they stay in space or come back? And that depends on the service that you purchase. Uh, Earthrise services, you do, they do come back. Um, Charlie, let me ask you something. The uh, containers that the cremated remains are in, are they engraved with the uh, passenger's name? Yes, and that, that's included in the um, cost of the launches. Uh, the capsule is engraved and a lot of people ask us and we provide uh they'd like to purchase a, a replica capsule so mm -hmm. with the engraving and mm -hmm. you can get that uh as well right but for the earth ride services the return flight services are those engraved capsules returned yep. like it is to the uh to the owners of the family a absolutely they have a flown keepsake at that point yeah, that's that's fantastic. That's fantastic to have in your in your home. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Blah, 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 blah. I'm afraid to ask this one. Knocking on wood, but I'm gonna have to ask because if I don't, someone will. Uh, what happens if the launch fails? What happens if the launch fails? Well, generally speaking, the launches, if if they fail, that means they didn't get where they were going and if they fail early the ashes are generally scattered at sea uh, as they uh land um the um 
contract that we have with clients spells out what's a success. And if we meet that success, the mission is successful. If we don't, then you're entitled to a, a no cost reflight. And that's why when we collect ashes from people or cremated remains from people, we ask for more than we need for a single flight. So that in the very unlikely these days event of a failure, we can just configure the capsules back again without having to go through the process of getting more ashes from the family uh, at the end of that time. So in, in the likely event that there's a success, we're left over, we have some remaining cremated remains. We scatter those at sea near the launch site or in the desert at an approved scattering location and then provide a certificate of scattering from the funeral director that that does that okay uh the knock on wood here uh we, we have not ne never had that opportunity well I, I i'm sorry can't call it an opportunity because of course it's not uh, but we've never had that occurrence in any one of our flights, and and, and pray to God that we never no, have. No, actually, we've we've lost two flights over the years. Oh, hello. My <laughs> apologies. I I, I yeah. did not know. Uh, well, that was a long time ago. It was actually yeah, it was before it was before me. <laughs> before you, exactly. So uh, we lost a mission on an orbital sciences Taurus rocket, where we didn't quite achieve Earth orbit and the payload re-entered in the uh, Southern Indian Ocean. And uh, so we did a reflight uh, for those. And then we lost, we were on the third Falcon 1 flight very early in the history of SpaceX. And that's the one where the second stage got rammed by the first stage. Or I, they, wow. had a, they had an orbital, they just didn't get there. And so those, uh, ashes. That one was flown from the Kwajalein Atoll, so those capsules went into the Pacific Ocean, which again, we then did a reflight. But that was uh, over a decade ago was the last time yeah. we had a failure. Okay. Well, uh, we've learned a lot tonight. Uh, we're pretty much uh, here at the end of our, our program. Uh, this is not the end, and any questions you may have can be asked at any time if you just go on our Celeste's website and our Celeste's Facebook page. If you have questions, you have concerns, uh, don't hold back. There's no such thing as a, a stupid, idiotic question, whatever. No, they're all very important to us. And by answering your questions, we, we remind ourselves on, on what it is we know or that we don't know, uh, but that we go and find out for you. So um, we, we, we are here for you here at Celestis. Uh, I want to thank Charles, my boss, the CEO of Celestis Memorial Space Flight. Uh, it is an incredible experience. Uh, guys, I've experienced a couple of them, and, and they have just been uh, fabulous, just the camaraderie. People walk away with email addresses and phone numbers and hugs and tears, and uh, it is very, very incredible thing to see. It is, it is awesome. So um, once again, feel free to contact us at any time. Uh, become a part. The fact that you guys, even if you don't have a loved one going up, you yourselves can represent yourself. Uh, going up in space and actually be on a, I'm going to quote it as a celebrity flight, if you want to go out with Gene and Major and, and, and Jimmy Doohan, uh, by submitting DNA. So try to get as much information about that as soon as possible. Don't hold back, guys. Uh, at least go and get the information. Okay, If you don't think you're ready to check into this yet, think again. You should get all the information right here and now. Charles, when are we having our next broadcast? Is there anything that the uh, folks can look forward to in terms of date? We typically try to do it the third Monday of each month. Um, so looking forward now, uh, right now we're saying it's the 20th of December. That may be a little close to Christmas for us to do it. We may do it the 13th, but we'll, we'll let everybody know. We, okay. we, we, put, we send out email blasts and everything else. So, um, um, but we'll have some more good news to share, I think, by then. All right, that's going to be great. Check us out on our Celestis Facebook page. Check us out on our Celestis uh, webpage. Uh, remember, there are um, patches. If you if you like to own a patch of any of our previous launches, just go on our site and check out what the patches were. Look at the wonderful artwork. 
and uh, see if you don't want to add that to your collection or, or, or so. Uh, thank you so much, Charles, for joining us. I really, really appreciate it, boss. Every time you're on, it's, it's very interesting and, and informational. So. Well, it's always a pleasure to chat with you, and we'll look forward to uh, continuing uh, as we go forward. Thank you very much, Mark. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Uh, I don't cook. So if you have any leftover meat you want to send me, you can you can contact me over Facebook and say, where do I send this? So I um, uh, appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening. It's been great seeing and talking to you. And we just want to say good night and we will talk to you guys soon. Bye bye. Safe travel. This is the launch conductor in um, Mission Control. We we pause at this moment in our countdown to remember and honor the lives of each of the participants on the Celestis Memorial space flight. Their presence on this flight signifies a commitment to the opening of the space frontier shared by all of us. We wish the friends and families present today and all those who are with us in spirit all over the world, Godspeed, good luck, and our thanks for allowing us to share this very personal time with you today. LCL. Five vehicles armed, three, two, one, fire.